full swing and it's hard to believe of uh, kind of regular season, like heavy regular season uh, midweek matches. We had three games take place last night. Uh, North Carolina Courage versus Orlando Pride, Racing Louisville FC versus San Diego Wave, and Portland Thorns versus Washington Spirit. We're going to chat a little bit about these uh, midweek matches first, and then uh, later in the episode, we will be going through a preview of the games that are going to be taking place this weekend. But we got to wrap up this action, Lisa. Let's talk a little bit about North Carolina Courage versus Orlando Pride. I'm so excited to chat about this one. Orlando Pride, officially undefeated in their yeah. last three matches, picking <laughs> up a 2-1 win over North Carolina Courage. Goals from LaRue and Clough. Uh, Lisa, I got look, we got to start with, with the beginning here. We got to start with our preview of this match, quite frankly. Who did we pick in this match? Well, what, what did the picks break down to between you and I? Uh, we, you had a draw in this one and I had North Carolina taking the win. So we are both losers. Look, love (laughs) to come on here and talk about how big of losers we are in in predicting this match. The visiting side, Orlando pride heading midweek into North Carolina, getting on the board early. And it's, it's just like a thing. It's just like a trend for this, for this Orlando pride side. The trend is that we're seeing, an early goal or two happen for this team over their last few games. And not only is it happening early for them, like in the opening 15 minutes, Sydney LaRue is often uh, in the mm-hmm. mix of this. I, I, I love it. Uh, it's we we're seeing this Orlando pride team uh, slowly get some pieces back. It started with Aaron McLeod returning back to net Sydney LaRue, who was uh, working through, uh, an injury of her own now getting back out on the pitch for this team. And we're seeing the immediate impact that uh, that type of player has for this team. Uh, just, just an exciting time. I mean, I know yeah. for us, Lisa, when we were previewing this team, our biggest burning question around them was we want to see them lean in to their oh, yeah. rebuild a bit, you know, and they, they have a mix of, of veterans on the team. They have a lot of new faces and they've got an entire new coaching staff. And now they find themselves on a three game undefeated streak. I, that puts it so perfectly because there was a lot of question marks about Orlando coming into this one and even uh, North Carolina, frankly, because they were coming off of a bye week as their game was postponed due to COVID protocol. Uh, some rules changed in the NWSL about the COVID protocol. You could add now COVID replacement players. But when we previewed this North Carolina Orlando, we weren't sure what players were going to be available. And then looking at the yeah. same line, we also were aware that it's a quick turnaround for these sides. And when we got the starting lineups, Casey Murphy in goal for the very first time this year for North Carolina courage coming back from injury, there was uh, no Denise O'Sullivan in the starting lineup. And then for Orlando pride, no Darian Jenkins, no Leah Pruitt, no Gunny Yon's daughter in the starting lineup. So there was a bit of minute restriction and minute management for the player. Um, I was a little bit nervous about because we know how Orlando can start so quick and without having a player like Leah Pruitt who can press so high and be that outlet player and someone like Darian Jenkins who can balance out Sidney LaRue, that wasn't there, but they didn't need that. Michaela Clough, the rookie for Orlando, a huge game from her. We saw her grow throughout the 90 minutes in this match against North Carolina, and it was really impressive yeah. to watch. Her combination play with Sydney LaRue, they they combined for both of the goals together. That's how it happened. The first one, it was a really well-struck shot from Clough that's parried wide by Casey Murphy, and then LaRue was able to follow it up. And then the second goal uh, for Orlando, it's scored by Clough, but it's essentially like a dummy run by Sydney LaRue. She draws the players near. She doesn't quite get a touch on it. And then Clough is able to follow it up and find the back of the net. But this was an exciting game. You could tell some, some heavy legs towards the end of this match. You could tell that Orlando had just played a match that... North Carolina um, has a lot of players that hadn't played a lot of minutes coming into this one. We got really good looks from Brianna Pinto, uh, Taylor Smith, Davinia as well. Brianna Pinto getting the lone goal for the courage in this match. But um, anything can happen in the NWSL. And this is just the start of all of the chaos of the regular season. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I loved seeing uh, Abby Kim inserted in this in lineup for for Orlando Pride. Um, De La Corta as well getting some minutes with, with this team again. We, we talked a lot about uh, you know, maybe newer or perhaps unfamiliar uh, faces with this Orlando Pride team and and the impacts that they're going uh, to have, but. Being able to sort of see this, this pride team kind of go on put put together like a a string of matches like this, I think is is good. That's that's healthy for for any team. I think that is sort of finding themselves uh, in in a rebuild year, you know, or for framing it that way in terms of you know putting together pieces to build on um, to to kind of look at and circle and say, okay, here's here was a match where we did some good things. Here was a, a match where we didn't do some good things. How can we you know, iron things out and, and and get and sort of make sure that we continue this run that we had mm-hmm. during this time, you know, because it's a long it's a long season um, for for all teams. And uh, I'm happy to sort of see what we're seeing at the, at the beginning of this season for for a team like Orlando, for the expansion sides, obviously, as, as well. Uh, it's been exciting. But, you know, we saw, like you said, Lisa, we saw a little bit of maybe fading a little bit uh, toward, towards the end of that match, you know, a late game goal of Brianna Pinto kind of snatching one back for North Carolina, making things, you know, a little bit uh, nerve wracking, maybe perhaps if you're on the uh, Orlando pride uh, side of things, but um, I'm just so impressed uh, by what we've been seeing uh, from LaRue. I mean, I think she's building off of what, quite frankly, she was already doing mm-hmm. for this team to, to begin with uh, was a standout player for them in, uh, in 2021. So knowing that she went out kind of early in this season, I think we both were a similar agreement. We're just like, well, that is going to suck (laughs) for for Orlando Pride. Hopefully it's not too, too long. Uh, But uh, she, she made her return. And, and, you know, within this game, I think when it gets down to sort of those real kind of those, those dangerous moments of a game, when you're kind of like trying to close out maybe those, those final 15 minutes. And although they did concede when you're looking at some of the numbers out of this match, I'm, very impressed with the fact that, you know, they won the duels battle in right. one against the North Carolina Courage side, that that's not necessarily easy to do. And we've chatted about that before. Like it, it, there's going to be moments from this pride team where perhaps they kind of maybe rely on a little bit more physical play to try to get them through some games. But I think it, maybe they struck a little bit of that balance finally in this one. Yes, I think that's really good to point out about the duels battle. Um, also, Casey Murphy, we got our first looks at her after dealing with a bit of an injury throughout this year. She was listed as questionable even coming into this match and ends up getting the start. Um, it, I I wasn't seeing the same Casey Murphy that we saw last year or that we saw in the offseason um, with the national team. And I know she's coming off of an injury, but she looked a little less mobile in the box. Um, Great shot stopper, right? She can do that, but a little less mobile. So that's something also to keep an eye on. Is she not entirely back yet, but I don't know. They needed her to play. So it's yeah, just something I mean, to look at as we, as we also preview North Carolina, yeah. they've got another game. Well, we, ch- we, we chatted about like how, you know, the players were, some of the players on North Carolina were dealing with some COVID protocol. And while Murphy, isn't one of those uh, she's been dealing with a knee issue, but with somebody like Caitlin Rowland, who has been in the starting keeper position for several weeks now, you know, maybe we have to wonder if maybe this was a game too early for a player like Murphy. And uh, I guess we'll see when we kind of maybe get into the preview portion of this, but congrats to Orlando pride on the three game undefeated streak. Speaking of streaks, Lisa, San Diego hit the road. And they headed over to Louisville to face Racing Louisville FC and t- put their own win streak to the test. They were the only team in NWSL to have three consecutive wins to start off the regular season. And Racing Louisville said, enough of that. <laughs> and they defeated San Diego Wave 1-0 by way of a free kick goal by Savannah DeMello. Something in the water in Louisville, free kick set pieces uh, being executed by this team to start off their 2022. Uh, what do we have in the picks in this one? Lisa? I think if memory serves me correct, I think we both went San Diego in this one. We did go both San Diego. You also said there was going to be a penalty kick in this uh, one. Remember? I and, I, and I went high goals two to one. And I think uh, we did something like one, one nil in this match. But um, I think 
it, this was really fun to watch because we talked about how great all of these games were and North Carolina, or excuse me, San Diego coming in, they had had two back-to-back -back shutouts to start their regular season. And uh, that now for them to be shut out for the first time this year was very impressive to see from a team like Racing Louisville, whose defense has been good, but not great. They've been broken down a lot throughout the Challenge Cup um, by Houston Dash, even which doesn't have the most prolific attack. So the fact that Katie Lund and the back line for Racing Louisville could come in and be incredibly secure against a really dynamic San Diego team. Again, minute rotation for both sides you're seeing here. I mean, Alex Morgan didn't get the start. She came in at 45 minutes, though, and making a bit of a difference as soon as she does that, getting shots off and, and getting a little bit more lethal in the attack. But throughout this match, it was really evenly played. And I think playing at home for Racing Louisville gave them the upper hand in this match and, and playing against a team that – they didn't know, right? They've never faced San yep. Diego before in this expansion side. And because of that and, and the naivety of racing Louisville, that really played into their favor because they could just go out and impose their game on San Diego throughout this match. And the set piece, I mean, I think it's now known across the NWSL that you cannot foul racing Louisville <laughs> within 25, 30 yards of their box because – They've got Savannah DeMello. They've got CeCe Kaiser. They've got players that can yeah. whip Ekic, a ball. Yeah. On, I mean, Ekic, they can whip a ball on a rope and get past the best goalkeepers in Kaylin Sheridan for San Diego. And this goal from Savannah DeMello was a beaut, was a beaut. Sheridan even got her fingers on yeah. it. And it's still an in. That means it was kicked so powerfully with so much texture that as it curled towards the, the upper 90, it still went in despite getting tapped this game was great and a great goal um a great shutout by katie lund as well and and no casey stoney this is yeah. aware just for uh match happened i think it was either tuesday afternoon or wednesday morning that head coach for san diego casey stoney uh was been put on covid protocol so did that change things Probably. I think Casey Stoney is a really good game yeah. day coach and she can adjust things on the fly throughout matches. And we see her talking to our players constantly from the sidelines and adjusting game calls. And in their last match for San Diego, after they had gotten a goal, she called over Kaylin Sheridan and, and they were just chatting instead of giving her a hug. She was telling her what to do, how to change positionally and defensively. So uh, that's a big loss for San Diego to not have Stoney there. Yeah, I mean, and it was just so last minute too. like maybe, mm -hmm. you know, under the impression like, yes, like if you just maybe text or or retest or, you know, confirm or unconfirm. Uh, but unfortunately, was wasn't able to make the trip. But, you know, Rich, Rich Gunny, part of this uh, mm -hmm. coaching staff, um, I would imagine that leading up to this point, there's enough game plan in place, yeah. you know, to sort of follow or adhere to. And, you know, for in San Diego's defense, you know, I think it kind of leveled out, I think maybe towards the latter stage a little bit of, of the second half, you know, you're talking about two teams kind of even on shots, nine apiece. Uh, Louisville just sort of edging that with, with shots on target six to four. But I think maybe I would have, while I would have maybe liked to have seen another like little insurance goal, perhaps from, from racing Louisville. I think I, with this game for me, I want to, you know, praise the, the defense a little bit because I think this is an area that we've talked about this team before in the past where we're just like gosh they've got a little bit of struggle there's there's something going on where they're not quite on the same page yet and I liked that this was a game where they were able to go ahead and maintain a very narrow scoreline we absolutely have to highlight Emily Fox she was outstanding in this game especially in the closing minutes to try to go ahead and shut out and preserve this very narrow lead so I appreciated uh you know some of the defensive shape there uh, in the end uh, Katie Lund obviously we praised already um but I like I like this I love these type of matches like this because these are the games I think that people point to when they're talking about NWSL and the parity within this league and uh, sort of the high level of competition that exists here that you can have a team like racing sort of go up against a team that is on a hot streak right now and just completely 
combo break that just end it shut it down and now you have uh, san diego kind of having to hit the reset button and uh you know go back to the drawing board and kind of figure out the the rest of their next few weeks because they're still going to be on the road Yes, exactly. And and with this loss, San Diego Wave, they remain at the top of the NWSL standings because they are coming off of those three wins that they had in their last three matches. So despite um, not taking home any points against Racing Louisville, they stay at number one with nine <laughs> points, which is is pretty impressive and their goal differential from that four nil win uh, with Alex Morgan notching all four goals a few weeks ago has helped them tremendously. And it's those small margins that'll all come into play later in this season. Let's talk about this last match for the Wednesday slate of games. This was an exciting one. I think you and I, we've said circle this one. If there's only one game that you can watch during midweek action. And I don't think it disappointed at all. I know we had a good time watching this one. It was Portland Thorns FC versus Washington Spirit. A 1-1 scoreline to close this one out between the two sides. Listen. A long time since these teams have met in Providence Park. They were supposed to meet last year, but unfortunately the game was ultimately canceled and then ultimately issued as a forfeit to Portland Thorns due to uh, COVID protocols. Uh, and it's been a long time since the Spirit have been able to oh, head yeah. on over to Providence Park and go head to head with the Thorns and get a result. So here it is, one one in this one. Lots of exciting stuff in this one. Lisa, I think we both had Thorns in this one as well. I had a draw. In you had match. a draw. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh my God. Draw. Finally. <laughs> I know. I had a draw in this one. I, I knew it was going to be such a battle. And, yeah. and that's exactly what we got. Now, there was a goal that was called offside from yep. Emily Sonnet. So it could have been 2 1. It could have been a Washington Spirit win. But um, you mentioned such a long time for the Spirit to go to Providence Park and play in that facility. And also, Washington. Uh, ending Portland Thorns shutout streak. It was Bella Bigsby actually at the start of this game before the first goals had happened that she surpassed 80 franches shutout streak for the Thorns. And then Washington Spirit Ashley Hatch puts that to bed. This game was tremendous. The first half was hectic and chaotic and there was a lot of energy and it was moments of fast paced soccer, but also moments of feeling out the opponent and, and just settling the game down. And at halftime going into um, the second 45 tied zero zero, I was still convinced that we were going to get goals. It was like, there's yeah. too much energy in this match and there's too many goal scorers in this game right now that it's going to end scoreless. Um, it, it does once one goal a piece, but the first one coming from Portland Thorns from the home side. And I wasn't surprised by this at all. Sophia Smith ends up netting the goal. She had a tremendous game for Portland Thorns. She was battling up against Emily Sonnet. That 1v1 battle was so fun. <laughs> oh, God. So impressive. Yeah. Emily Sonnet won it. 99% of the times, actually the goal that Smith scores, she's not going up against Sonnet. It was on the right side of the field. So it's Sam Staub that's trying to stop Sophia Smith and the angle that Smith scores this goal at from the far side of the 18 is just really, really impressive. Um, there were some tired legs throughout this game. You could see that a little bit from, from Washington spirit as they've had such quick turnarounds, lots of travel coming into this one, dealing with, lots of players and their injury and player rotations. We saw Anna Helferty back into her 2021 spot on the field in the outside back role for Chris Ward. I, I didn't like it. I honestly, I did not like Anna Helferty in the back line. I like her higher up the field without Tara McKeown. They need someone else in the front line and Ashley Sanchez needs to be in the midfield for Washington. I, I think that would have changed things against, yeah. against this Portland Thorn side. A big part. I mean, I think a big part of it for me, and honestly for us, as we talked about it in the previewing of this game, uh, was you know the quick turnaround. I think for a team like the Spirit, the fact that they have had such a compressed, uh, match-heavy kind of schedule to start out their 2022, uh, kind of have to maybe pick and choose your ba your battles as you're looking. Ahead. If you're the coaching staff and, and looking ahead of things, and and kind of playing around with the concept of, of minute management or player rotation. And you got to circle certain games and say, okay, maybe this player is going to get a 45 here or a 60 here, et cetera, et cetera. I think maybe that that's coming into play. And then you kind of mix that a little bit with the fact that there are a couple key players 
who are working through some things in, in Kelly O'Hara, Andy Sullivan, who have been unavailable for this team for, you know, the last couple of matches. I think that comes a, a lot to, you know, to, to, to play into those types of scenarios, but not super surprised that maybe some of the goals in this one weren't coming until the second half mm -hmm. for both of these teams. Cause it, the first half was just like setting up a very, I think, exciting kind of uh, blueprint for, for everybody on both sides of the pitch. And I think for, for those of us at home uh, watching. So then I was like, when they went in a halftime scoreless, I was like, okay, I was like, we might, we might get some fireworks in, in the second half. And, and we did, but so I, I don't like, it's, you see this scoreline and, and maybe it's, if you're not watching the game in, in real time, you're kind of like looking at it and you're like, okay, like maybe not too much happened, but there was a lot of uh, good action in this one. Very, very into one, probably one of my favorite games of the regular season mm -hmm. so far for me, it kind of lived up to the billing in terms of, you know, spirit, not able to be in Providence park and in, in quite some time, these two teams going head to head, for the first time in a while, it lived up to that for me. And I love that it was, of course, like who is it going to be for Portland Thorns, if not Sophia Smith, but I absolutely loved that. It was a link up with Natalie Quica and Smith in this goal. I think uh, Quica has been huge for the Portland Thorns to start off this season. I would also maybe throw in somebody like a Megan Klingenberg. I feel like these are two mm -hmm. players who cover so much ground and the two of them have had massive, massive performances for this Thorns side. But it was a short, it, it was quick. It was a short lived lead. We had Ashley Hatch, you know, equalized yeah. just, just minutes later, quite frankly, in this one. So it was a little, um, it was not super surprising for me that they came in the second half. Um, and then that that offsides call, I think you, you kind of maybe people were like, oh, like, how is that going to, you know, not be off? But I think there was enough there for officials to to make the call. But I think what was probably more impressive after that was this end to end kind of awareness yeah. from the spirit. It was it was immediate. They saw it was offside. The call was not the goal was not given. Uh, and the immediate like presence of mind for this entire team to just completely sprint the other way and get on the defensive end to sort of lock things up. I thought was, uh, was kind of, was kind of funny and it, it made me chuck a little bit. I loved it. I was like, so look, look at the energy here. It was so impressive. And, and yeah, the entire team sprinting, but it was Ashley Sanchez and Trinity Rodman who are on the outskirts of the corner because that's typically where uh, forwards go defensively or uh, excuse me on the attacking side of, of, Corners, you want your center backs in there who can get up, head the ball, be aggressive. And on this quick counterattack that Washington now had to defend, it was Ashley Sanchez and Trinity Rodman becoming center backs yeah. and, and tearing down the field to do that. And that's like the work off the ball that so many times we talk about and it gets lost on a lot of people, but you can see it specifically in that play because you just see Sanchez and Rodman sprinting down the field together, yeah. looking to get back in position. Yeah, for sure. I think we got to chat a little bit about Vafa before um, we head into the preview segment of this episode about maybe some things that came out post game. Ashley Hatch um, going down, and there was a collision there with with uh, Bella Bixby at, at one point. Uh, Chris on the Ward, goal, on, on the goal. goal. Chris, Chris Ward, um, you know, expressing his frustrations, uh, you know, as a head coach in the post game about uh, some of the things going on here. And this is this is something that we've been been hearing not only from Chris Ward, but Chris Ward specifically, but a number of other coaches in the league getting getting into post games and expressing their frustrations. And now it is we're we're watching this or we're hearing uh, this kind of shift a little bit in the, these arguments that are taking place within the the post games that are occurring here it's it's going from you know just general frustrations with the officiating mm -hmm. whether it's of the opinion that of officiating is, is not making the appropriate calls or there's not you know enough clarity on the calls that are being made and it's shifting a little bit uh to what is quite frankly turning into a player safety issue for a lot of these coaches um and you have Chris Ward in, in the post game, uh, speaking specifically about some of his players and, and making very valid points, uh, you know, specifically about a player like Ashley Sanchez or Trinity Rodman or somebody like Emily Sane, who sustained an early rib injury, uh, talking about that. These are, these are the players that people buy tickets to go and see mm -hmm. specifically these type of players. And I don't think he's incorrect in that, uh, assessment. So I think it's some underable, understandable frustration. I think that's mounting. And I think it's something that we're going to have to continue, uh, to keep an eye on quite frankly. 
Yes, I agree. He was very upset in his post game press conference talking about that and and player safety and um, really calling for a call to action from the league, from the referees about what he can do. And I think he warned the officials at halftime, like this game is getting out of hand. Like you, you guys need to control it. Someone's going to get hurt. Um, And uh, luckily Hatch was able to finish out the game, but both Bigsby and Hatch went down pretty hard. There's a number of tough injuries and and tough calls in that match. I mean, it got feisty. It definitely got feisty. I think, you know, and I think the, uh, another point to this, I mean, if you're the head coach, you're going to, you're going to have the, the, you know, the biggest perception of your own team, right. And sort of have the clarity that it's, it's happening in front of you to your team and to your players. But, you know, I think the argument um, holds more weight if you're looking, if you're looking at this uh, across the board, you know, mm-hmm. uh, there was a really bad moment when Sam Staub, you know, made a very poor choice and made a very bad tackle on Caroline. Yeah. And now this is a player who is out for several weeks. So it's it's across the board. So it's like there's moments that are happening to spirit players specifically. And there's there's a very clear moment that your example that you can look at from a spirit player making a very poor tackle on an, on, on an opposition. So it's kind of like it's it's sort of something that we have to pay attention to across the board. Uh you know, we're looking, I think maybe at all 12 teams and it's very, very early in the season. So it's something I think I know that we're going to pay attention to, to sort of see how this continues to Mm -hmm. develop, but uh, Washington spirit and Portland thorns splitting the points in this one, us both, uh, you know, curious about uh, what else is going to come out of this in terms of officiating or player safety. We'll keep an eye on it for everybody.